Want to know who are the best German journals from World War II? Wait no more and join us as we uncover their stories and find out why they earned such great fame. I have gathered a list of 5 German generals that I think were the best in their field. So let's start with the number 5 on our list. Walter Model. Walter Model was a key supporter of the Nazi ideology joining the party as early as 1925. In 1938 he was promoted to the rank of Major General and he was given the command of the 4th Army Corps, which took part in the 1939 invasion of Poland. He was appointed as the general of the 9th Army which operated on the Eastern Front. His tactical expertise proved invaluable during the planning stages of the Battle of Kursk, a major German counteroffensive against the Soviet forces. Adolf Hitler had begun to lose faith in the older German generals of aristocratic backgrounds, turning instead to his trusted troubleshooter, Walter Model. With his middle class origins and unwavering loyalty to the Nazi cause, Model found himself increasingly favored by Hitler. In March 1944, Model was promoted to the rank of Field Marshal in recognition of his exemplary service and dedication. His appointment as Commander-in-Chief of the Western Front soon followed when Field Marshal Gunter von Gluck was relieved from the duty amid suspicion that he played a role in July plot against Adolf Hitler. Model, however, was unable to stop the Allied advancements in France. In September of 1944, Army Group B, located in the Netherlands, it was placed under the command of Model. In this position, he defended the Arnhem against the British airborne attack, also known as the Operation Market Garden, stopping the Allies from an early road to Germany. The Battle of the Bulge at the end of the 1944 was the last major battle for Model. After finding themselves surrounded in the rural regions of Germany, Model, the commander of the retreating Army Group B, had no other option than to order his 300,000 strong army to lay down arms and surrender. In a desperate attempt to avoid capture, he committed suicide. Number 4. Gunther von Kluge Field Marshal Gunther von Kluge was one of the Adolf Hitler's most accomplished generals in the Second World War, serving on the Eastern Front with distinction. He was appointed as the commander of the 4th Army of the Wehrmacht in 1939 and led it during the invasion of Poland, achieving great success, earning himself a promotion to the rank of General Field Marshal in the Operation Barbarossa. During the Soviet Union's devastating December 1941 counter-offensive, Field Marshal Fedor von Bock was replaced as the commander of the Army group centered by von Kluge. However, his command ended abruptly in October 1943 when he was involved in a serious car accident. After a lengthy recovery, von Kluge was appointed to lead the German forces in the western occupied territories of France in July 1944 after taking over from his predecessor, Field Marshal Gret von Rusten, who had been removed from his post due to displaying a defeatist attitude. Although Kluge's forces attempted to stop the Allied advance, they were ultimately unsuccessful in halting their onslaught. With the relentless pressure of the Allied invasion of Normandy, Kluge recognized that there was no way German could win the war in the Western Europe. Kluge was not directly involved in the 20th July plot to assassinate Hitler, but was still heavily affected by his failure. On 19th August 1944, shortly after he had been summoned to Berlin for a meeting with Adolf Hitler, Kluge tragically took his own life. Number 3. Erwin Rommel Erwin Rommel, a brilliant German military commander, earned his prestigious Pearl Lemarite medal for his exceptional achievements during World War I. At the start of World War II, Rommel was assigned to the role of guarding Adolf Hitler's headquarters. In this capacity, he had direct access to the Führer himself and developed a close relationship with him. In the early 1940, Rommel was given the command of the 7th Panzer Division and led successful campaigns against Allied forces in 1940 invasion of France. In February 1941, Rommel was appointed as a commander of German forces dispatched to North Africa to aid the quickly deteriorating Italian army in Libya. This marked the beginning of a period that would result in some of his greatest military triumphs. His leadership style earned him the nickname the Desert Fox, and Hitler, highly impressed by his accomplishments, promoted him to the rank of Field Marshal. But Rommel's successes were short-lived. At the end of October 1942, his forces faced a decisive defeat in the Second Battle of El Alamein and had to retreat to the German bridgehead in Tunis. Rommel was ultimately recalled to Germany by order from Adolf Hitler in March of 1943, marking an end to the Desert Fox. As the war of movement was his speciality, Rommel was charged with fortifying and defending the French coast of English Channel against a potential Allied invasion in 1944. 
With great ingenuity, Rommel began erecting an array of coastal defensive structures that included ingenious inventions such as anti-tank barriers. Rommel's experience in North Africa led him to believe that the only way to effectively defend the breaches was to prevent enemy forces from establishing a bridgehead. To achieve this goal, he proposed an ambitious plan for deploying reserves immediately behind coastal defense works, ready for counterattacks at any point. On July 17, 1944, Rommel's car was attacked by British fighter bombers during the midst of an Allied invasion of Normandy. As a result of this strike, Rommel's vehicle careened off the road and flipped over multiple times. This resulted in serious head trauma and he was hospitalized. Unfortunately, Rommel's name was mentioned in the 20th July plot to assassinate Hitler. As opposed to the swift execution that many of other plotters faced, Hitler instead sought to take a more discreet approach with Rommel due to his esteemed status. He was presented with a difficult decision, commit suicide or face a trial that would result in his disgrace and execution. On October 14th, Rommel took his own life with a cyanide pill, sacrificing himself for the benefit of his family and reputation. Then he was given a full state funeral, where it was publicly declared that he had died from wounds sustained due to the bombardment of his car. Number 2. Heinz Guderian Guderian was a highly influential German military theorist and one of the main advocates of the Blitzkrieg strategy. His vision, which called for rapidly mobilized mobile mobile forces to overwhelm an enemy through shock and speed, revolutionized modern warfare and heavily influenced the development of armored forces. After the conclusion of World War I, Guderian stayed with the German army and developed a keen interest in armored warfare. Guderian wrote his famous and influential book, Afton Panza, in which he set to promote strategic mechanized warfare. Guderian was privileged to find an ally and advocate in the form of Adolf Hitler, his commander-in-chief. In the Ottoman of 1938, Guderian was appointed as the commander of Germany's mobile forces and he quickly put his theories to the test in the Polish campaign. His tactical expertise proved successful, leading to the quick German victory. In May 1940, Guderian spearheaded an even more daring offensive, pushing through France and driving the French army to the coast. In the Russian campaign, Guderian led his troops to the outskirts of Moscow in October 1941, before being forced to retreat. On 25th December, Guderian was removed from his post due to his refusal to follow Hitler's order to stand fast and the conflict of opinion that had arisen between him and Kluge, who had recently taken over the command of Army Group Center. In March 1943, Guderian returned as the inspector of the general armor for the German armed forces. In this position, he had sweeping powers to prioritize the production of armored vehicles and decide upon their deployment in the combat operations. On July 20, 1944, a group of conspirators made a daring attempt to assassinate Adolf Hitler. In the wake of this event, Guderian was appointed as the acting chief of the staff of the Wehrmacht. But on 28th March 1945, he was sent to leave after a failed attempt to launch an offensive against the Soviet forces in the town of Kostrin in Poland. When World War II came to an end, he was taken into US custody. Despite being a key figure in Nazi Germany's war efforts, he was able to escape being declared a war criminal at the Nuremberg trials due to the lack of documentary evidence against him. Guderian was released in 1948. Number 1. Erich von Manstein Field Marshal Erich von Manstein was one of the most prominent German military commanders during World War II as well as for being among the most successful German generals to command in the war. He successfully spearheaded campaigns against Poland, France and Russia. At the beginning of World War II, von Manstein served as the chief of staff for General Gerd von Rustedt during the invasion of Poland in 1939. It was then when he came up with an ambitious plan to attack France along a concentrated armored thrust through the Ardennes forest. Von Manstein's daring plan was rejected by the German high command but was brought to the attention of Adolf Hitler. After examination, Führer immediately saw its potential and gave it full support. In the June of 1940, Erich von Manstein was promoted to the general after successfully leading infantry corps in the assaults against France. He was then assigned to lead the 56th Panzer Corps in the invasion of Soviet Union in 1941. 
Under his command, the group nearly succeeded in capturing Leningrad. In September 1941, von Manstein was appointed to take command of the 11th Army on the Southern Front. In just one battle, the 11th Army was able to capture 403,000 Soviet prisoners. Manstein's forces also managed to withstand an aggressive counteroffensive by the Soviets in the winter, and he continued to lead his army in the capture of Sevastopol in July 1942. His leadership during this period resulted in von Manstein being given the rank of field marshal. Von Manstein also achieved a major victory by coming to the aid of the 6th Army which had been surrounded in Stalingrad in the late 1942 and early 1943. He managed to regain control of the city of Krakow with a successful German counterattack in February of 1943, making it one of the most impressive victories for Germany during the war. After being driven into retreat, he was dismissed from his position by Hitler in March 1944. Following the war, he was arrested by the British and put on a trial for war crimes. Though he was eventually acquainted of the most serious charges, his health deteriorated while in prison, prompting his release in 1953. He went on to advise the new West German governments on the organization of a new army, the Bundeswehr. And here you have my list of what I think are five of the best German generals of World War II. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment down below of what you think about this. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.